So you move to Spain. Um, I would say be prepared for change. Um, people say culture shock because it's become a bit of a a buzzword. Um, well, buzz two words. But the fact is, waste collection, um, being illegal to drink on the street or sell alcohol on the street are a couple of things you may not be aware of. Um, also things like there's a lot of nudist beaches and there's a lot of strange, you know, people going topless on the beach, well, women going topless on the beach is something. Me, I find it rather, you know, vulgar, <laughs> but you know, other people don't. But you know, everyone to their own is just being aware of it. Um, because you know, it's, you know, people go, oh, it's natural, blah, blah, blah. But for me, it's like, I don't want my kids seeing that sort of stuff. You know, 50 year old woman with her bits hanging out. It's, it's, it's not nice. <laughs> but it's more a case of adapting to the culture. And it's very likely that people that do that sort of stuff aren't even from Spain. <laughs> Um, their tourist places can be um, a little bit strange it was like um, a friend of mine was talking about last time they were in Benidorm there was like a guy in his 50s trying to urinate in the street and his trousers fell down and he's standing in the street with his um, bits hanging out you know there's kids walking past and that's a British tourist that's that's your that's one of the things that bugs me um, and why I'm avoiding those sort of places I don't like mixing with those types of tourists they're not they're not what I call travelers they're holiday binge drinkers um, a lot of people come to Spain for that reason the cheap alcohol um, it is cheap uh, it's not hard to be cheaper than the UK, but it is a lot cheaper. And also things like the, the shots of vodka and stuff aren't measured in the same way. So the, a drink of vodka is a lot more stronger than a drink of vodka in the UK, for example. But also understanding the siesta and the fact that people sleep at certain times of the day, everything slows down because it's the hottest time of the day. Um, they'll work later on. Um, I've, I've seen it in a lot of countries before because quite simply it's too hot in the middle of the day so they make up for it later. I remember when I was in Greece, the guy that ran the hotel would um, sleep in the afternoon um, because people forget because they're out on walking around that He's up first thing in the morning cooking their breakfast and everything. When they go off shopping, that's when he sleeps because later on, he's the guy running the bar and doing the evening meals. So I think there's a misperception on the quality of workmanship and people being lazy because I don't think people really are. I think they're, it's because they don't do a nine to five, they work different hours. Also, talking to some of the guys regarding construction work, the standards on Spanish workers is much higher. Um, and I know the same with Germany, the quality is exceptional. Um, but often there was British workers used because they work all day. Um, it may not be cheaper, but at the same time, if you're building a hotel, a hotel wants to be open and to do that is to speed it all up to speed that up you need people to work all the hours um, Spanish and German um, societies don't work that way they're more family orientated um, in Germany come the end of the day people just stop work and they leave most people finish early on a Friday because they work an extra hour a day in Spain they have siesta, you know, they, they spend more time with the family during the day and stuff. So who's got it right and who's got it wrong? But these are all things that you need to adapt to. Um, being aware that when you go shopping, that the supermarkets might actually be closed. Going to, um, going to get something done, like going to the local garage, might not be open because the guys aren't there. They're sleeping somewhere. 
So, or spending time with family. So there's all these little things and it's not a case of, well, where do I get a book on all this? Like anywhere else, it's observe, listen, look, um, just be a bit aware about yourself and you'll pick up the rest as it, as, it, um, as you go along because the people around you are doing things that you'll notice. You know, you go one day and there's nobody there at 3 p.m. or whatever. You can ask somebody and they'll say, you know what, they're not open at that time, but they'll still be open at midnight, you know, later on. Same as music stops um, because of the, the way people work. Um, bars stop loud music. 10 p.m., 12 p.m., you know, the police will come down and shut the place down if they hear it, they're not, they're, they won't mess around. Um, so there's things to be aware of. Obviously in the tourist traps, they're obviously a little bit different, but if you want to um, live the Spanish life, it's very different to the disco environment of binge drinkers and vomit in the streets. <laughs> Um, to um, a nice tranquil life and good food in a Spanish uh, village or town a bit further out. So it's just things to be aware of. Just take your time, observe, research a little bit, but most of it will just pick up on the way. You're not going to be. Um, you're not going to be too. You're not going to go too far out of the way because people will tell you soon enough and. Just apologize if you don't know. It's surprising how far an apology will go because a lot of people don't do it these days. Okay, thanks for watching.